All right, so hi everybody, um, welcome. I am Haley and I'm in for Tina tonight. Um, if you're using our suggested playlist or even if you're not, go ahead and get your music started now. And we'll get started in child's pose tonight. So just make your way. If you have blocks, they might be nice to have for practice tonight. If you don't, don't worry about it. So just get yourself settled in. It might be kind of nice to take the child's pose with knees apart, um, just so you can start getting into the hips a little bit. <clears throat> And I'm going to stay upright so I can so I can talk to you. <laughs> so just start the process of settling in. Takes a little bit of time for our bodies to just soften, to start to peel away the layers of your day so far. So see if you can allow yourself to just sink in a little bit. You've set this time aside for yourself. So just check in. Where are you at right now? And maybe you start to pay a little bit more attention to your breath in terms of how long the inhales and exhales are, but also the depth. And so maybe you visualize the breath moving through the body. For example, maybe you imagine the inhales travel up the belly, up the chest, up the arms to the fingertips, and maybe the exhales go around and down your back all the way to the hips. And you can imagine your breath moving in circles in that way. Really filling up as much as you can and emptying completely. As you breathe here, this is a nice place to set an intention for your practice, which is what makes yoga a moving meditation versus, you know, just exercise. So Maybe it's something you want to cultivate. It's something you want to practice. Maybe it's something you want to offer. So just take a moment to let something come up. And then maybe you start to crawl your arms toward the right side of your mat. Maybe you even stack the left palm on top of the right hand and press the hips back as you breathe even deeper. Crawling hands through center and over to the left side. Again, maybe you stack the right palm on top this time and press back as you lengthen. Arms come back through center. Maybe you tent the fingertips. If that doesn't feel good, you don't have to do it. And just know here in child's pose, you can return here at any point in practice that you need. There will be opportunities for challenge and for rest tonight, and just knowing that you take what you need and you leave the rest, okay? So coming to a tabletop, get yourself situated, shift your weight side to side, start to widen your fingers and let your knuckles root down. I find that it's really important to stretch the wrist, stretch the forearms a little bit, fingers. So it's just shifting your weight forward over the fingers and then back, just forward and back, nice and easy. <clears throat> and you're trying to think about equal weight distribution across the hands, okay? So now maybe you shift your weight side to side. And then maybe we turn our fingers back around to face the thighs. And you can just hold it there if that's enough of a stretch. Or maybe you bend your elbows slightly, lifting the palms a little bit. Maybe you feel it more intensely there. And just keep breathing. 
Okay, turn your hands back around to face forward. Curling the toes under, lift the knees and just step back to your high plank. Get it set up. So you wanna feel a lot of strength here um, in terms of like activating your muscles. So really press the heels back, squeeze your thighs, lift the belly, push the mat away, almost like you're puffing up the shoulders and squeeze your bum a little bit. So we start to feel like a lot of sensation arising here, some heat building and breathe deeply. We need that heat to move through our practice. And you can set your knees down at any time. One more big full breath. And with the exhale down, we're a dog. So take some time here to move around in any way that feels good. You could pedal the feet, shake the head. Maybe you bend the knees deeply a couple times and straighten them back out. Keep your arms strong and see if you can wrap your shoulders out away from the neck. And then we'll settle into stillness here. So <clears throat> soft knees, tailbone reaching up and back, and three deep breaths in your place of stillness. So we'll start to move with breath. On your next inhale, roll forward to your high plank, coming fully into it, and then exhale, downward dog. Inhale, rolling forward. Strong arms, strong hands, exhale, downward. We'll do one more inhale, roll forward. And exhale, downward dog. Slowly walk your feet toward your hands. For your forward fold. Once you get there, bend the knees a lot. You can have hands on blocks, that's nice, or not, but let your head hang down. You can have, you can grab opposite elbows, you could clasp the hands at the base of the head, and then just sway side to side, like really let the upper body just like swing, getting looser, breathing. Maybe you let your exhales out the mouth, kind of a sighing breath. Arms come back down. On your next breath in, find your halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Two more times, inhale, nice long spine, strong core. Exhale, rounding down. One more time, inhale, halfway. And fold it down, slowly rolling all the way up to standing arms reach. And exhale, hands to heart center or down by your side, just settling into your mountain pose. So feet right under the hip bones, soft knees, maybe you close your eyes. But feeling the full base of the feet pressing down and then thinking about getting taller from there. So shoulders back, belly in. <sighs> Feeling this like strength and stillness here. That's kind of what we go for in pretty much all of the asana. From here, inhale, reach. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. And exhale, plant the hands, high plank. Now, as you breathe in, shift your weight forward over the fingers and set the knees down. Spin the crease of your elbow forward and slowly lower down to the mat like that. So your elbows are hugging into the side of your body. We'll inhale, untuck the toes, lift the heart for your baby cobra and exhale, downward dog. Inhale, bend the knees. Exhale, step or hop, top of your mat. Inhale, halfway, and exhale, fold. Inhale, slowly roll up, reach up, gaze up. Exhale, hands heart center. Again, inhale, reach, and exhale, take it down. Halfway lift, really breathe in, 
and exhale, set up your high plank. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Knees come down or not, but we'll exhale lower. Keep hugging those elbows in. Untuck the toes, breathe and lift the heart. And exhale downward. Inhale, bend the knees. Exhale, top of your mat. Breathe in halfway. And fold, let it out. Inhale, rolling up, reach up. Exhale, hands, heart center. One more time, inhale, reach. And exhale, take it down. Halfway lift, breathe in. And high plank, breathe out. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale for your back bend of choice. And exhale, downward. So stay in your downward dog. Take a couple more deep breaths. I'm not going to cue the vinyasa flow during class, but if you'd like to take it at any point, feel free. I say things like make your way to downward dog or meet us in down dog. So if you'd like to take your vinyasa flow, then you're welcome to. So right leg rises high. Just breathe here. Make space. Soften the left heel down. Lift the right leg a little bit more. Draw the belly in. Inhale, roll forward to a one-legged plank. Exhale, lift it up and back. Inhale again, roll forward, high legged, uh, one-legged plank. And exhale, up and back, three-legged dog. Last time, inhale, roll forward. But this time, we're going to bring the right knee into your chest. Arch the back, rise up high on the back toes. Pressing the mat away hard, lifting the navel up toward the spine. Press the mat away. And then step the foot down. We'll come up for warrior one. So your back foot is going to be planted down at an angle. So warrior one. Um, so I like to widen my feet, like think railroad tracks, maybe almost even your mat width apart. <clears throat> but that can help with squaring the hips because you really want to feel like the left hip is wrapping forward. <clears throat> so once you settle into your warrior one, see if you can feel the back foot pressing down fully, but then because it's rooting down so strongly, see if you can feel like a line of energy coming back up the leg, through the core, all the way to the fingertips. So inhale, reach the arms up. Breathe out as you clasp the hands behind you, rolling the shoulders together. Inhale, puff up the heart. And we'll exhale, bow down, humble warrior. So letting the head hang down, we're here for a couple breaths. So strong legs, strong feet. Maybe you even like shake your head, like let something out, let it go. Push down through the feet more, rising back up for your warrior one. And then we'll shift forward, weight in the front foot, lifting into warrior three. So the back toes have to turn and face down to the ground, pressing actively through your left heel. Drawing the low belly in for support here. Now hands can stay at heart center or fingertips can come down to your block lightly. As we bend the front leg, the back leg is going to bend so left knee comes behind the right. And then we re-extend, finding your warrior three. So with breath, it's inhale, bend, little squat. Exhale, press, extend. Few more. So the variation with hands at heart center is going to be a little bit more challenging just because you have to balance as well as work. So choose what might suit you. Really press hard back through that heel. Let's do two more. Last one. With the breath in, come to your chair pose, feet together, hips low. Continue to breathe here as you settle into your chair. 
So think long spine and try to keep your chest open. So if you need to widen your arms or even take them to like a goal post, totally do that. One more breath in here and let's exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway and exhale, make your way back to your downward dog. Once you're there, left leg reaches up to the sky. Big breath as you find space. Maybe also softening right heel down. Lift that leg a little bit more, even if it's just like mentally. With an inhale, roll forward one-legged plank. Come all the way into it. Exhale, lift up and back. Two more with your breath. Noticing the strength and stillness in your body. Now on this last one, draw the left knee in, arch the back, rise up high on the right toes, really lift, push the mat away, and step the foot through, setting up your warrior one on this side. And coming up, and once you come up, then you can adjust. So move yourself around, get your legs where you want them, get your feet where you want them. You just want to feel stable, strong, determined, right? So right hip wrapping forward. And again, with the back foot, see if you can root it down strong enough where you then can feel that like lift, that strength coming up the body all the way to the fingertips. So inhale, reach, get long. And exhale, maybe the opposite clasp with the hands behind you. Inhale, puff up the heart. And exhale, bowing down to the inside of the front knee. Keep the feet strong so you can really let the upper body release. Then push the feet down, rising back up. Release the grip of the hands. And then tipping forward, finding your warrior three. So it's either fingertips on blocks or hands at heart center or a different arm variation. But flex the right foot, pressing the right heel back. That's gonna help with your balance anyway. Core is long, breath is steady. So when you're ready, you start to move with it. So inhale for your little squat, right knee comes behind the left. And exhale, push back through that heel, re-extend. So you're letting your breath fuel your movement. If you wanna go faster than me, that's totally fine. If you wanna go slower or just hold warrior three, that's fine too. Steady gaze, nice long neck. Let's go three more. Last one. With your breath in, we're finding chair pose. Sit back. Heavy in the heels. You should be able to see your toes if you were to peek down quickly. Squeezing inner thighs toward each other. One more inhale here. And exhale, fold. Breathe in halfway. And exhale, make your way back to downward dog. And every time we come to down dog, like if it feels good to just walk it out a little bit, move around, totally do that. So we'll start um, moving a little bit more with breath. So inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step it through. Set up your warrior one feet. We'll inhale to rise. Exhale, hands clasp behind you. Inhale, puff up the heart. And exhale, bow down, humble. Inhale, rise, release the arms. Exhale, warrior three. Only one squat here. So inhale, bend. Exhale, re extend. Chair pose with the inhale. And forward fold, exhale. Inhale, halfway. And exhale, make your way to downward dog. All 
Awesome. Once you're there, inhale, left leg. Exhale, step it through. Set up those warrior one feet. Inhale to rise. Exhale, hands clasp. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, humble. Inhale, rise up. Arms reach. Warrior three, exhale. Only one squat, so inhale, bend. Exhale, re extend. Chair pose, deep breath in, get low. And exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. And make your way back to downward dog. We'll meet in child's pose. I always like to put um, a few little moments of child's pose or another rest just to check in. Notice how the body feels now. Notice what's kind of swirling around or moving through. <clears throat> Check back in with your intention, maybe. And then when you're ready, we'll make our way back to downward dog. Right leg lifts, but this time, we're gonna bend the knee and roll the hips open to your right side wall. So you can move the right leg around, seeing about making more room like little pulsing up to the sky, knee circles. Maybe you do like little reaches with the right toes. But keep the arms equally strong. And then we'll bring that knee to chest and step the foot through. This time we're coming up for warrior two. So your back foot's gonna turn to face your left side wall. And then same deal, like move around, settle in. I usually, almost always, do a couple bends of the front leg just to help open things up. And once you get where you wanna be, squeeze the feet together, push them down into the mat. Low belly lifts, shoulders down. Front palm slips. With an inhale, find peaceful warrior. And exhale, find your side angle, gazing up. Again, inhale, peaceful. Keep that front leg bent. Exhale, side angle. One more time, inhale, peaceful. And exhale, warrior two. We're headed into half moon. So take a little baby step in with your back foot. Right fingers can come down to block or to mat. And you lift the back leg. So you want to feel like you're totally facing your left side wall. And breathe. Wobbling is cool. Falling out is cool. So start to lift your um, left leg. And maybe you'll start to feel how your butt squeezes when you do that. So maybe there you start to find like little tiny pulses of the top leg, just lifting up, up, up. Just small and strong, strengthening, squeezing your butt cheek. Squeezing for four, three, two, top hand comes down, standing split. I'm gonna back up so you can see me a little better. <clears throat> so head is hanging down. Back leg is lifting. Normally, we don't cue like an open hip standing split, um, but it feels good. So if you want to try opening your hips to the left and keep lifting that leg, feel free. And then there, find your little pulsing of your leg again, squeezing your bum. So small but super strong. Keep squeezing for eight more. Four, three and forward fold. Just take a moment here. Maybe you kind of like shake the legs out a little bit, shake the head. Breathe in, find your halfway lift. And make your way back to downward dog. And from there, left leg up. 
knee bends, hips roll open to the left, and we make space here. So any movement that feels good, anywhere you want to go. And then we'll slowly bring left knee into chest to arching the back and step through, coming into your warrior two. And settling in, maybe shoulder rolls, maybe like a neck roll could be nice. Once you're where you want to be, squeeze the base of your feet together. Imagine too, like think about the back side of your thighs wrapping in front palm flips with a breath in, peaceful warrior. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, really reach up and back. Exhale, side angle. One more inhale. And exhale, warrior two. We'll get set up for a half moon here. So little baby step in with the back foot. And then left um, fingers come down to block or mat. Lift the right leg. So drawing your core in, thinking about lifting from the side body. And keeping your standing knee soft. We don't want to lock out the knee. So then you start to lift this top leg and you kind of find where that work is, where the, where the resistance is of squeezing your bum. And you find those tiny lifts there, tiny presses. They don't have to be super fast. Keep breathing steady. Good. Really squeeze. Here's four, three, two, and standing split. So head releases, keep lifting the back leg. And then again, option to roll the hips open to the right. Lifting that leg a little more and finding those tiny lifts again. You can definitely just hold it steady if you'd rather. But if you want that extra glute work, go for it. Here's eight. Four, three, two, and forward fold. Again, take a moment to just bend one knee at a time to shake it out a little bit. <sighs> On your next inhale, find your halfway lift. And we'll meet back in downward dog. Notice if you would like another moment in child's pose, and please take that if you feel like that would serve you. <clears throat> Either way, whether you're in down dog or child's pose, just letting all of that work up to this point, letting it swirl through, letting it move through. letting go of any kind of thoughts or judgments you might have had about that or how you moved through it or whatever, letting that go because it doesn't matter. So you can definitely stay here and rest. I'm going to offer some optional core work. It's going to be done on the forearms. So if you'd like to do some obliques, Feel free to join now. If you'd like to do rest or something else, please do that. So <clears throat> from a tabletop, you lower the right forearm and you'd set up your forearm side plank. Again, bottom knee could be down. Once you have your version, you start to lower the hips to a hover right above your mat and then press up. So inhale to lower, exhale to press up. So you get to decide how quickly you're doing these. I just ask that you breathe with movement, feeling the strength build in the body. Good, we'll do four more. And then we'll hold it 
hold it up, maybe top arm reaches up, maybe top arm reaches up overhead for a stretch on the other side. Take a deep breath in, and then coming down, we'll swing the legs through and over to the other side. Setting up your version of your forearm side plank. Take a moment. When you're ready, inhale, hips lower, exhale, lift. If it works, you could even move with the beat of your music. Keep that bottom arm strong. Again, feeling the strength and stillness in your body right now. Here is four, three, two, and hold. Hold it up, maybe top arm reaches, maybe reaches up overhead. Take a deep breath in. And coming down, coming to a seat. Arms sweep up. Inhale, reach, get long. One hand comes down, the other arm up and over. Doesn't matter which one you start with. Take another round of breath here. Really press the ground away to get more space. Arms reach up, breathe in. And down the other side. Again, press the mat away from you. Arms reach up. And we'll make our way to downward dog. So slowly walking yourself to a forward fold. And again, just like the beginning of class, if you'd like to ragdoll with the arms or something else, but again, maybe just a gentle sway. Release any grip of the hands that you might have. Take a breath in as you find a halfway lift. Exhale, fold, and then we'll slowly roll up, nice and slow. Head comes up last, so a tiny bit of balance, and then we'll do some hip opening, and that'll be it. So. Weight into the right foot, left knee comes up in front of you, flex your foot, core draws in, option for arms to be up overhead. So inhale here, exhale, press through your heel as hard as you can, press, press, press. Inhale, bend, exhale, press. Just one more of those, inhale, bend, exhale, press. Now, inhale, bend, Exhale, warrior three. Length, pressing that heel back. Now, right into our half moon. So right fingertips come down and let the body roll open. Good, and then down into your standing split and your forward fold. Give yourself a little like shake, a little shimmy, and slowly again roll up. Head comes up last. So let's do that on the other side, and then we'll make our way down. So soften the left knee. Right knee comes up, flex the foot. Arms up if you want. Inhale here. Exhale, press through the heel. Inhale, bend. Exhale, push. One more, inhale, bend, exhale, push. Inhale, bend, exhale, warrior three. Get long, left fingers down, and then roll open, half moon. Standing split, and forward fold. So take your feet about mat width apart, heels in, toes out, and let your tailbone sink down so you're in Malasana, low squat. I like to um, use my elbows to gently press the legs apart. You could glide side to side a little bit. You could pop into crow pose if you have arm balances in your practice. So whatever you want to do, about three breaths or so, it's totally your time right now. Good. 
feeling like your tailbone's just kind of anchoring down, chest is open. Cool. And then you'll plant your hands down, <clears throat> step the left leg back, and then heel toe the right foot in so that you're in kind of a lunge, one hand on either side. Back knee comes down, untuck the toe. So this is a nice place for blocks too if you want to use them, your low lunge. But let the hips sink forward. Let the heat that we've built up in the body assist you here now that it's time to open and release. So with hands or with blocks, you're going to walk yourself back to Ardha Hanuman, half split, <clears throat> flexing your, your toes here. And then think about where your hip bones are. Um, they should be like level with each other. So sometimes wiggling the hips side to side can help with that. And then you want to feel like you're drawing your heel back toward you. So just a couple of rounds will flow forward to low lunge and back here. You can keep your hands down or you can sweep your arms up. So it'll be like inhale, low lunge, exhale, half split. So just a few rounds, you can go as slow as you want. Just let this feel good. Good. Now from here, we're just going to go into half pigeon on this side. So laying down the right shin right in front of you, left leg long behind you. Now, if you know half pigeon bo bothers your knee, just do figure four on your back. Also, if your right hip feels significantly lifted, you could pop a little pillow or a block or something under there for some support. Again, once you feel like your hips are level and you're centered over everything, you can decide to tip forward a little bit. You don't have to. It's just wherever you can settle in feeling the intensity of, of this hip stretch. So <clears throat> wherever you've chosen to be with the upper body, it can be nice to find like something to rest your head in, whether it's a block, whether it's your hands. Maybe you let the eyes close and you see about allowing yourself to sink in here. Again, just like anything else, letting sensations come up, letting feelings come up, letting them move around and move through. And slowly coming back upright if you're not already. Take your time. Option for a quad stretch by bending the back leg. Another option would be to reach for it, but again, no pressure to do that. Gently release if you have the foot. We'll make our way to three-legged dog. So right leg up, just to shake it out a little bit. I like to do a bicycle pedal, just wiggle that leg. And then our left foot is going to step down in between the hands, setting up your lunge. Back knee comes down, untuck the toe, let the hips soften forward. So whether you have blocks or not, thinking about letting the chest be open. And then we'll slowly walk it back. So thinking about not locking out this knee, thinking about flexing the toes. Maybe you think about your spine being long. And another way to deepen this stretch would be to think about sticking your butt back. And then on your own, start to flow forward and back. So it's inhale forward and exhale back. Just a few times. 
trying to let it be kind of fluid. Finishing up the round you're on, and then we'll get set up for half pigeon on this side. So laying down the left shin in front of you. Right leg back behind. Maybe you take a quick moment upright to just peek at your right toes. Make sure they're not curling in. Everything long. Supporting with any props that you might want. And then choosing to fold any amount if you want. So maybe here you start to notice <clears throat> if you're holding tension somewhere else in the body. For me, it's like I usually clench my jaw or I'm like hunching my shoulders. So just like noticing. See if you can even soften your belly as you breathe. Sometimes to just a gentle rock side to side with the hips can be helpful. Just a little one. And then slowly making your way back upright. An option for that quad stretch if you did so on the other side. And let it go. Make your way to your three-legged dog just to shake this leg out. And we'll walk into a forward fold. <clears throat> and then come down to your bum. And then roll down to your back. So once you're on your back, hugging around the shins. Squeeze them and feel that compression. Maybe you kind of like open the knees apart and circle them around in the hip joint. And then you could stay right there. You could grab behind the thighs or you could go for a full happy baby. Whichever you've chosen, you're thinking about shoulders letting go. You're thinking about tailbone uncurling. Let's release the left leg all the way down to the mat and hug around the right shin. Bring it out to the right and then bring it center. Hold it with your left hand. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, gently guide it across to your left side, gazing right. So spinal twist, really important not to force the leg down. And important not to force the head to look right, like really severely. You just want a gentle gaze. Maybe you let the eyes close. And you start to think about allowing the body to downshift. Good. And keep breathing. We'll come back through center. And gently switch legs. Hug that left shin in. Draw it out to the left. Bring it center, take a breath in. And let it cross over to the right. Gazing to the left a little bit if that does not bother your neck. Even though the body's all like um, twisted here and kind of contracted, see if you can breathe deeply 
creating lots of space. And then we'll come back to center. And we'll extend the legs up to the ceiling. <clears throat> trying to let this be um, not work, as little work as you can allow it. So you want to just feel like they're kind of floating there. And the upper body is heavy. Let the eyes close if that's feeling good. And this gentle inversion will allow the blood to flow back up the legs. And in so doing, it also um, it relaxes us, but it also rejuvenates. So seeing if we can let this inversion do its magic. And then letting the legs come down and finding where you'd like to be for your Shavasana. So maybe that's arms and legs long. Maybe you could even do legs up the wall if you're close to a wall. You could do butterfly legs or anything else that you like. as we enter our final rest, allowing the breath to just kind of do whatever it wants, right? Let it move through, in and out gently. And here's where we practice surrender. So letting go and, and giving yourself permission to find and to enjoy Feel yourself sinking down toward your mat a little more with every exhale. Letting the breath begin to get deeper. And as we breathe deeper, we let some awareness start to come back in. Maybe you send your breath all the way down to your toes. Maybe you send it all the way down to your fingertips. And maybe that breath brings fresh energy into the body with a sense of peace. And maybe you start to find small movements in the body. And maybe those movements become a little bigger. Maybe you roll your head side to side. Maybe arms sweep up overhead and you take a full body stretch. 
then bring yourself into a little ball and roll onto a side, pausing there just for a moment to let it all sink in, but to know that everything that you've cultivated tonight, you can take out into your world with you. And coming up to a seat as you're ready. In gratitude for this practice each other. The light and dark in me sees, honors, and respects the light and dark in you. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, everybody.